This is my Telemaster. I have Tone Rider Hot Classics in the neck and bridge position. I'd never tried them before and I wanted something a little hotter, so they're in there. This bridge is pretty cool. I think it was just like some kind of knockoff on eBay, but it's got this little scooped area. So when you're picking, you don't hit the edge here. And I want to do a little update. I bought some stuff in that box, which I'm going to open up here in a second. I want to put in new pots. I've got some new knobs. I've got a cool new control plate as well that I want to put on. The neck is from Mormoth. And the body is from Guitar Mill. And I built this guitar before Fender made this widely available. So it was a number of years ago, 2012, I believe. It's an ash body, two piece. Great guitar, just needs a facelift. Here we go. Got some new knobs. Got some wiring. I'm gonna replace the top hat with one of the round knobs. I went with this company for the parts I'm about to show you. So we got our pots here, a CRL three-way toggle switch, switchcraft jack. You can get different caps, and this is a vintage paper in oil cap, a K40Y9. I'm going to use that bad boy. And then on this side, a treble bleed kit. So we've got the cap and the resistor. And that's an orange drop and an Allen Bradley resistor at 100K. And lastly, I've got the Rock Rabbit aluminum control plate. And the thing that's cool about this one is that you can see the three way toggle switch is at a slight curve. Some of the stuff I probably didn't need to replace. This appears to be a CRL three-way toggle switch. I'll put it in a fresh one and we'll save that one for another project. And same thing here. This looks good, but this one is the tiny pot. Looks like I shielded this already, so we don't have to worry about that. Just have to, looks like there's a cap here. Just have to detach this. And these wires are the plastic coated and I'll replace those with also the cloth covered which are a little nicer. I've been using a stick soldering iron for lack of a better term. I recently upgraded to this a little station. This will be my maiden voyage using it. I figured I'd use this now to get used to it desoldering that before I began a pedal kit. Fun times, but we're learning. Here's a little side by side. You can see the bevel there, where in fact the screws that go on a CRL three way toggle. The screws are flat on the bottom. They don't need this. So I don't know that this is really going to do me much good in the future. One thing I'm noticing is that these mounting holes are off. So you may have to redrill this one. It's aluminum, so it's a lot lighter. This side is not polished. It's actually a kind of cool look. So I'm going to go ahead and make a treble bleed. Next thing is to snip these off and get a little solder there.
I've cut off some shrink tubing. Try to hold this so I don't burn myself. Made this little device to test these caps to see which direction they should go. I just learned this recently. I always thought that caps could be put in the same way, but apparently if you connect it to an amp and do a light squeeze, one way you'll hear a live connection, like if you were to touch the lead or the tip of a guitar cable, and then the other way you won't hear it as much. That's new to me. So here we have an input jack plugged in, which is plugged into a practice amp. There's the ground and the hot side coming off of it. So this would be the same thing as touching the tip of the guitar cable. <laughs> and apparently if you connect a cap and give it a light squeeze, one side produces this kind of effect, but muffled. Mm -hmm. And if you switch the cables, it should do it less, and that's the side you should use a Sharpie on to indicate, I believe they call it the foil side, or the grounded side. So I'm gonna give this a shot. You guys might not hear that, but it's a very, it's a lesser version of this. So I'm going to switch them and see if it gets louder. So that's more pronounced on this side. Meaning that this should be the ground. Now we'll try this guy. It's barely audible. That one was a little harder to hear. And this one appears to be that side. Right now I'm just going to tin the lugs. Now we're gonna solder in this wire to the appropriate lugs to serve as a jumper. So into this hole, underneath this one. And then you want to cut across. This is kind of a dry fit. And then down to that one. The first thing to do is to get your first one soldered so that you can manipulate the wire to the other lug. So let's do that. Now that we have the jumper wire in place, it's going down here and it needs to go into this lug here, as well as a few other things, including the treble bleed. Let's gauge how much of this wire, this is gonna be over like that. And then we're gonna need this wire still. You just wanna expose it by pulling down the fabric. And just in general, it's always good to tin your wire tips. So first I'm gonna get this wire in. We actually have to get three things in that hole. And then we're gonna get this guy and this third guy in there. Drop a solder on here.
this is in there now. That's golden, that's golden. Yeah, these are all connected. Next up is the input jack, and I'm just gonna go ahead and tin these wires. Just takes a little, little tiny dot. This is acting like a makeshift stand. Oh, I'm gonna twist these guys around. And the other thing we're gonna do, just cover those up with a little trim wrap and just cover those lugs up like that. Get these wires coming up nicely. And there you go. And those are covering the wire to the lug all the way to the insulator. We're up like this. All of our wires are accessible. Like pickup, bridge pickup, bridge ground, and their outputs. And we have plenty of length here. This lug here needs to be grounded. So just put some shrink wrap on the tip of that. And I'm gonna slide that in, solder that to the case. Now we have all three of these ground wires to contend with. And remember on this middle lug with the treble bleed, I did not solder yet because we're going to put this lead going that way, sharing that one, and then this wire will be soldered onto the back of this pot. I'm gonna be a little bit generous with this. Let me just double check my thinking. Now we're just gonna add a little bit of solder to these. Okay, I am happy with that. Now I'm going to plug it in and hopefully there's no outstanding issues with wiring and not testing before doing all that.